be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And let us be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Our processional hymn this evening is hymn 51.
Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. <laughs> Inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. 
they told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, and you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest at the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in the dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Sunday, the first Sunday after Epiphany, uh, we have uh, service of Holy Communion at 8.15 and 10.30, and all of our Sunday school classes uh, will be running at 9.30 a.m. Uh, this coming Sunday. Uh, at the end of this service tonight, we'll have our annual tradition of King's Cake in the Parish Hall of Coffee and other refreshments, so please join us if you're able uh, to warm up a little bit on this cold evening. I uh, invite you now to stand for our sermon hymn. Uh, we continue with hymn 48, the last three stanzas. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. 
acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. You may be seated. Boldness and access with confidence through him in faith. This st stands or a line tonight that comes to us from our epistle speaks of how Christ's salvation has been open for all peoples, all nations. Yet the boldness and the confidence spoken of here by the Apostle Paul is not the prideful sort, not the boastful sort. Epiphany, what we celebrate tonight, or the manifestation of Jesus Christ to the entire world, the Gentiles, should be a feast that is humbling. Yet we sometimes turn such occasions away from their original intent. With the epiphany, the danger we can slide into is that of ingratitude. The danger we can slide into is taking pride or sinful pride in our status of standing in Jesus Christ as if it is something we accomplished. The key to humility here in this passage is by faith. This evening, let us see how we are to be bold with all access provided by Christ in confidence through faith. First, Paul spoke of the mystery being that the Gentiles are fellow heirs. The Gentiles are fellow heirs. All of us are fellow heirs of God's kingdom. Throughout the Old Testament, we see shadows of what will come with, the, with Jesus Christ opening the gates of salvation to all peoples. We read about Ruth from Moab coming into the promised land, being included, coming to God, Rahab from Jericho, and so forth. These were all Gentiles welcomed and fully incorporated into Israel as worshipers of God. In Christ, he has become our promised land. Therefore, his body, the church, all of us, made up of Jews and Gentiles, dwells wherever his people dwell. This is something that is truly humbling, for it turns the entire earth into sacred space, the space God's people dwell to serve him through loving him and one another. Epiphany reminds us of this humbling truth every year. As fellow heirs, we are counted as God's children on equal footing as everyone else, Jews and Gentiles. There is great responsibility in this status, though. The boldness in our status as fellow heirs is to proclaim this message to all that we encounter throughout our lives, wherever we reside. This boldness is in basking in the access we now have as heirs through Jesus Christ, by his grace, through faith. This boldness is in worshiping, praying, and submitting to Jesus, and submitting to each other regardless of our external circumstances. It is why the church for 2,000 years as Jews and Gentiles has spread throughout the earth and continues to do so even under the severest forms of persecution. The boldness is to submit to Jesus in a world that tempts us to reject Jesus to elevate self to God. 
constant temptation we must resist is to take this status as fellow heirs to the sinful extreme of elbowing out those we deem unfit or unworthy. When we elbow others out based on sinful human standards, we become no better than the Pharisees in the time of Jesus that boasted in their pride and their inheritance as Jews while treating outsiders with contempt. The way out of this pride is what we come to in the next part of this verse from Ephesians. We, as we read, are considered by God to be members of the same body. The New Testament is full of such imagery to describe the church as a body. We are all part of the body. We all have a vital function as the body of the church. Yet, the Pharisee spirit resides still in all of us from time to time. We all have the potential to find sinful excuses, sinful reasons to block people from entrance or participation in the church. The most sinful of all such blocking of peoples denies the message of the manifestation of Jesus to the entire world or the epiphany. That salvation as the body of Jesus Christ includes peoples from every part of the earth, from every nation of the earth. Yet we sometimes place our politics or our nation and sometimes even our race as reasons to disdain the message of the epiphany. We sometimes trash the manifestation of Jesus to all peoples in favor of our own sinful ideals to protect ourselves through touting nation or political party as more important than what it means to be a Catholic Christian, a universal Christian spread throughout all the world. And such we make up on biblical reasons to block the manifestation of Jesus to certain peoples while deeming it okay to manifest him to other people. In this, we commit idolatry, putting nation or party or self-protection over the clear Catholic and universal manifestation of Jesus <coughs> to every single nation. Members of the same body is the most difficult subject, where we are tempted to disdain others to promote self. Epiphany is meant to remind us of our lowliness and our need for Jesus Christ. This is not through pitting one nation, race, or political party against others as superior. No, it is through the manifestation of Jesus to all peoples. In such, our boldness is the access we all take part of as the body of Jesus Christ throughout all the earth. We are confident not in that we earn God's favor, but that he through grace provided us with his only begotten son so that we would be full heirs as God's sons and daughters from all peoples and all races and all nations. And such the last part of Ephesians 3 verse 6 is important for us. As Gentiles and fellow heirs and members of the same body, we are partakers of the promise of Christ through the gospel. This is where things should get real for those of us in Jesus Christ. It is one thing on a theoretical level to say we are fellow heirs. It's one thing on a theoretical scale to say we are members of the same body. Both of these can be conveniently ignored through sinful human actions such as making church all about self to devise human-centered boundaries to keep undesirables out. Yet to partake of the promise of Christ through the gospel means to put the theoretical into life, into action. Partake 